So type 2 was the one that he said was the most common which causes the complication of AVN in 50% patients and about three-fourths are displaced. So you have to make sure that they are reduced well. And internal fixation is the treatment of choice as he has pointed out. There is no more only cast unless it is totally undisplaced. So always you need reduction. And what you are, the entire neck femur philosophy you must understand, it's a rare fracture. But the complications are devastating. You won't see more than one or two a year, but very high chance because you're going to get type two and three-fourths are going to be displaced. How are you going to prevent AVN and what are the determinants of AVN? So if you see, there are contrasting reports. Do you need to wake up at 2 a.m. in the night and fix? There are contrasting reports. Do you need to decompress the hematoma? It has been advised to do it, but there is no evidence that it really helps and people have talked variably about it. So if you compare AVN, whether displacement is more important or hematoma is more important, Boydzi was the one who aggressively said capsulotomy, aspiration, reduced AVN rates. In his series of 11 patients of type 2, he said early evacuation, which was corroborated by Swin, uh, Swin, uh, Swinkowski and Winquist, where they had six cases. So six and 11, based on those 17 cases, they said capsulotomy, internal fixation, and we don't get AVN. Foringer said 6% AVN in spite of decompression within 36 hours. Uh, Cole's series in 96, 30% in displaced fractures. Six were not decompressed, <coughs> 10 were decompressed, but they still got AVN. Literature says 8% AVN even if decompressed early, right? The landmark paper actually was from Charles Melman, which is from... Uh, Cincinnati, that is Sheetal's Institute, where they actually did a meta-analysis and quantified the risk factors for AVN after neck femur fracture. 360 cases and what did they find? Fracture type and the age of the child were the only significant predictors of AVN and both of those are not in your control. The age of the child is not in surgeon's control, neither is the type of fracture in your control. But they were the significant determinants of AVN. Older children were likely to have 1.14 times more likely to develop AVN and with each year of increasing age. And type 1 to 3 fractures were 5, 15, 6 and 4 times more likely to develop AVN than 4. So that is what they predicted. The blood supply, Sheetal, uh, Manoj has already spoken about that greater the fracture displacement in that zone where all the blood vessels are, the greater risk of vascular disruption. So reduction becomes very, very, very important because that is the only thing in your control. Okay? We are here to talk about reduction and why is it important? Because we want to prevent AVN. So we need to have a good reduction and we need to have a stable fixation so that you can allow revascularization of the head so that you can preserve the intact vessels and allow vascular ingrowth from the metaphysis so that the head revascularizes over a period of time. Again, a paper in CORR about pediatric neck femur, 30 year experience, there was no relation between decompression and AVN rates. Time of surgery should be less as possible, not emergent, but urgent. And quality of reduction gives you lower rates of AVN. And the implant type matters, the timing doesn't. Again, another evidence which says that the time to internal fixation is not so important as stability of fixation. So what is in your hand? Good quality reduction and stable fixation. That is the one you should concentrate about. So we have learned that AVN needs to be prevented based on evidence, its age and displacement, which is not in your hand and quality of reduction and implant, which is in your hand. So it is accurate reduction, adequate stability, undisplaced. We know that just there will be less complications. But older children, the complete treatment as was proposed was close reduction, fixation, hematoma evacuation, that is plus minus, and application of a spica, especially in young kids when you are using an implant without a side plate. The reduction techniques have been classified into two parts, one with hip in extension or one with hip in flexion. But whatever is comfortable for you, you can go ahead and do. It is not what method you use, it is the quality of reduction. Right? Commonly people will do it, some people use a fracture table but I use a radiolucent flat top table with a small bump if required and it's usually the Ledbetter technique in 90 degree flexion, 
traction, slight adduction and circumduct it into abduction. What is important? You know that the retinacular vessels are torn. So, not to do multiple attempts. And if you don't get in the first or second attempt, please proceed to an anterolateral open reduction. Don't keep on messing around and turning around that neck too much and tearing whatever residual vessels are there. So, simple method of flexion, traction, adduction, internal rotation, circumduct into extension. Open approach, depending on your comfort, typically Smith-Peterson for higher fracture and anterolateral Watson-Jones for a lower fracture. Go through the planes, small capsulotomy and then with a finger or a lever you can get your reduction use a K wire to hold the reduction and then assess the reduction. So, Lowell was the one who talked about the alignment and he said there should be no kink, no C shape. It should be a smooth S on AP and lateral. So, the Lowell's S curves are important to judge the quality of reduction. Varus and extension are to be avoided when you get your reduction. This is an example of a four-year-old treated with screws after a close reduction and immobilized in a spica. And overall 12 month follow up you will see a good outcome even with a small implant provided it is protected by a spica. If you are not getting reduction as Manoj has mentioned you can joystick. You can try to joystick or lever it with a small Cobbs elevator or a small uh, Dura forcep or a K wire and try to get reduction by leverage techniques by going anteriorly and levering out the fragments so that you go intracapsular and get your reduction and then put a K wire for temporary stabilization. Again, this looks okay on the AP, but on the lateral, if you can see one, one screw is not really placed very well, but the spica saved the day, the screw backed out, but it still went on to uneventful healing. And this is a longer follow up, three years, five years follow up, it stayed healed without any AVN. Stability of fixation, if you are putting screws, they should be posterior and inferior towards the calcar. That is what Lundquist has said. So, posterior inferior is a better placement of screw. And the side plate adds stability. So, this is what we have been doing for a long, long time. Maybe about 15 years, small screws. As you can see, the first screw I use is outside the plate. And the side plate is just for an additional stability so that there is no varus bending movement and you can discard the spica in slightly older children, use a long knee brace or a small splint for immobilization. So, if you want to avoid the spica, you can use one screw outside and one side plate with a screw or a couple of screws and go slow with your rehab. The older the child, you can use a DCP with a 6.5 screw, but similar kind of construct and that does very well uh, as far as healing goes. So, another 10 year old, again, if there is a doubt about stability as pointed out, cross the physis. Physis is not important, stability is more important. And in adolescent age group, a pediatric DHS is the gold standard. So, 10, 11 and above, go for a small diameter DHS, not the adult DHS. And make sure that uh, your reduction quality is good. The implant options, you have cannulated screws, sliding screws and lock plates available. To summarize again, a neck femur type 2 is an acute vascular event where your vessels are disrupted. AVN is related to accuracy of reduction and choice of implant of and stability rather than timing of surgery. Emergent reduction is preferred to urgent, but accurate reduction is mandatory. Less than 3 wires and spica, 3 to 8 cannulated screws and spica with or without a side plate and 9 to 15 pediatric DHS or the adult uh, AO hip plate which is available and give preference to stability over the growth plate. 25% growth only happens proximally and you can easily cross the physis. Thank you very much.